Um, I have um, been an ambitious person in my life, and I used a lot of control and aggression to get what I wanted. Uh, when I take the wanting state away, I have a fear of laziness, of not being motivated to do anything, where I could just feel okay by sitting on a chair all day long and staring into space. So I force myself to get this motivation to then start to want and then start to work towards some goal that at the end of the day don't mean anything. And then I get really confused, like, okay, what do you do when you're in the state of like sitting here in a chair and not right. wanting anything? Right. What does that tell you about your motivation? Where does this come from? Self-judgment, like if I, I think, uh, mm -hmm. if I'm motivated to do something. Right. But the interesting mm -hmm. thing is you're saying, like, if you don't have that, you've got nothing, which basically means that all your intentions are ego-based. You don't have anything else. And that's why you lose motivation when you're not using force, because all your motivation comes from the ego. You've got nothing else because if you did have other options, taking away the ego motivations would activate your higher ones. So it means you don't have any. And that's what you need to address. You need to, because basically it's not laziness. It's that you don't have the intention. The intention then comes from the ego of attaining certain things to be able to manufacture the confirmation the ego needs. Mm -hmm. And when you are in that loop, that's all you do. And when you stop doing that, it's only, why should I do anything? And that's what you need to figure out. What is it that you want to do when it's not about you? when it's truly not about you. Because the trick is here that very often when we think, oh, it's not about it, I'm doing this for the world. Yeah, why are you doing this for the world? Because everyone should admire me. You know, we have to recognize how much the ego produces different types of intention and that we need to move beyond it. So if you're trying to get a higher intention that's not ego-based, how do you get to that state of understanding when it's for the rest of the world and it's not validation and motive, like some silly wasted time yeah. crap? I think based on the experience through my own evolution and having assisted billions of others, uh, it's you have to get tired of it. You have to come to the point where you truly realize that you're not getting what you truly want. You're getting what you think you want. But every time you get it, it's hollow. It's like, you know, a box of wrapping paper and there's nothing inside. The thing is, when you're in the state of the ego, because the ego only responds to reflection, all it cares about will be the box and the wrapping paper because it cannot relate to substance because the ego has no substance, you understand? It's only when you start growing and allowing more of your flow spiritually that you will start to ask the question, why is there not anything inside the boxes? You have this huge collection of boxes and you thought that's you know, what it was all about. And then you start asking the question, shouldn't there be something inside of here? You know, like, but it's only when the pulses of atma starts coming through the physical consciousness that you will start asking that question because then you will start vibrating substance. And then the emptiness will occur. And that's where you're at. The flow of Atma has started to come through. And you're starting 
to realize that this is just wrapping paper. What am I doing? But yet, you haven't understood how to manifest the substance. How do you do that? Because you know all about wrapping paper. You know? <laughs> but, and it's basically like kids. You know, you see them sometimes. You can, you know, buy them, you know, a big old, like, Christmas gift, and all they care about is the box and the wrapping paper. That's the best thing ever, you know? And that's what it's like in your unconsciousness. And it's okay. Gradually, you will start asking questions about the substance. So, again, what you vibrate will manifest. So... Um, discovering that emptiness and that lack of intention is important because it's only by detecting, you know, and truly understanding that I have no intention that you can start establishing them. And again, you have to channel them. It's not for the mind or the incarnated personality to create them. It's by not letting the mind create intention that the intention of Atma will start coming through. And then you will see through the wrapping paper. That will not, you know, make you blind. You, you will look for what's inside and you will recognize it because instead of being mirrored, you will look for the vibration you will be able to see through, you know, the glitz, the color, all of that, and just like, see, does this vibrate what I am from the inside? And then that gift will vibrate what it is from the inside. And you will see whether or not it represents who you are in your next step. So it's a, like, it's a shift in how you work, how you approach life. And you have come to the point where you are sick and tired. And that is extremely important. And to my experience, it's the only way we grow out of it because we have to exhaust every possible opportunity and then some because the ego exists, insists that this is working. It's all about the wrapping paper. But you have to feed spirit. And that's why it's not working. Suddenly, you know, when, when you allow more of the spirit, you will start feeling the hunger. Mm -hmm. You know, posing will not do anything for you. You will start feeling the spiritual hunger. And it's basically, you know, if you're hungry and you buy food and you're just extremely hungry, you don't even look at the wrapping paper. You don't care about the design. You just like open the package, you know. You want the food. So to be able to go through, like to move through illusions, you need to be hungry. So it's important that we experience and sense that emptiness and allow the flow of atma make you hungry. And when you are hungry enough, you will find a way. Okay, next.